Where the box? Who's in the box? Oh, what's in the box? Okay, so welcome to Bob's Basement Toy Vlog. I'm going to get started here. It is Friday. It is our 20th episode. Um, a real quick iteration, as I do at the beginning of each episode now. This is our fourth week. Um, I am uh, straightening up my basement, trying to get things organized. I have the time, obviously. I'm stuck inside. And I'm starting to actually make some headway on... This is Star Wars. This is G.I. Joe. This is Batman. This is Transformers. Getting things sorted into piles. And actually to the point where I've actually started to look at Star Wars stuff going... This is 375 figures. These are 6-inch Black Series figures. So, real quick iteration. 6-inch Black Series figure... This is a 375 figure. So these things now have to get put into separate boxes. This is going to be great because it's going to be easy. Where some of these, which I have in, in hard plastic shells, um, it's going to be a little bit tougher. So to work out those details, find the right boxes, um, without buying any more boxes is definitely going to be a big issue. Now, where the hell did that come from? And I'm also at a point where boxes are starting to form of things that I want to get rid of. So, to me, it's going to be, do I have an emotional attachment to it? Did I buy it because it was a, a collectible at the time, but I've lost interest in it? Did the value of it go down, but there's still interest in the toy? Um, for a collector who maybe wants a mint condition one, that's all factors that I have to deal with. So, today, um, it's going to be not too long of an episode. We have got two boxes. One box is from August of uh, 2015 that has been packed, well taped. Um, got handles on it. It's a Lowe's box, which is right here in front of me. And the other box is a purple bag. Now, I bought um, a Her Universe. Um, I think it was, uh, it, was like a, it was like a tank top set uh, for my wife at Comic-Con one year. And this, the, the items in this bag have been in there ever since. Um, they aren't the items that I bought, but I definitely kept the bag. So we'll start with this bag and then we'll move on to the box here. And the box does say Star Wars. So big surprise, right? Um... So the first item out of the bag is, this is the original, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Marvel uh, Superheroes Toy Biz Hulk. Now, this is a whole line. The interesting thing about this line is, now, Hasbro, who has the rights to make these figures, is going back and releasing their six-inch figures, the um, the Marvel Legend figures, in, in this size, but with this packaging. So you can go to Walmart... Uh, target and get a a modern six inch figure in this package so we do have a hulk of this nature that uh, we reviewed here on total toy recon um but it's, it's kind of interesting that this is the classic figure he's supposed to be the hulk um as you see on the back silver surfer dr doom the captain uh punisher spider-man the spider-man wave is now going to be in the style of um spider-man the cartoon series that was out in the 90s that's going to be hitting very soon and they just announced a mysterio figure so that's kind of neat um now toy biz uh, this is another interesting fact here that we have in toys toy biz now this is from what is this 1990 this is like this is 1989 and then this is toy biz in 1990 so here you have one company representing two different comic book in this, uh, two different comic book icon, uh, icons Marvel is being done by Toy Biz, and DC is being done by Toy Biz within a year apart. So not that uncommon then. This was four ninety nine at your toy center. I don't even know what that is. Um, but this is the DC uh, comic superhero line that was spawned from the eighty nine Batman line. So you had Batman, but he was in the style of the movie. But then you could get Robin, and he was in the comic book style. Very much in the era of the old Kenner figures where they had an action to them. But there was a Superman line. Um, then you could get Batman, uh, Rogue Villains, and then, of course, Robin. So here is the Joker. This was bought at Ames for $3.99. Hey, Max, what's up? Dave, thanks for joining me again today. So here we have an 89 um, Joker Batman. Um, I think it's funny how the one on the back looks a little bit different than the one on the front. Um, cool figure. Um, you actually has a little bladder, and then you could shoot water out of the uh, l the little posy that was on his chest. Um, so I thought that was that was a cool figure. I had a bunch of those, so it was neat to have them actually back in the day. Um, here's another. This is another great figure. So this is the the penguin uh, from the DC Comics superhero line, and he actually shoots the umbrella 
um, it actually just it shoots out so you can knock everybody over. This is a great figure, and they did re-release this figure sort of in the Kenner line, like down the line for um, when they started making Batman Returns figures and Batman figures. So this figure was re-released, again, but with a different paint sculpt. Here is... So this, this is what you're dealing with. So here you have the 89 Batman, also Ames, 399. Um, this was the 89 Batman. Now on the back, some of these vehicles here, uh, you have the original Batmobile from the movie, you have the Batwing and the Batcave. Love to have the Batwing or the Batcave. I have the Batmobile. Um, but these figures, again, you're mixing different genres. So here you have, anime, uh, you have the movie Batman and then you have a comic book style DC comic superhero. So a little bit different. And last card in the batch, oh, we have yet another Robin. So we've got two Robins, a Batman still on card. I used to have like six of these. I gave some to my nephews, um, but overall decent. I think there may be some more Marvel uh, superheroes out there. Uh, Punisher, maybe a, a Spider-Man. And, oh, there's one more figure in the pack. So this is cool. This is in the pack, in the bag. This is, and there's no weapons in here, so he must have been put in here randomly. But this is the Matty Collector Trap Jaw. So I do have some Mattel pieces, and uh, there he is. Great figure. Um, I got this as a uh, as a thank you sample uh, from Mattel when I went and visited them at Toy Fair. So awesome figure. Um, I do have a Masters of the Universe pack right up here. Been sticking a lot of figures in there as I've been finding them. I think his weapons are actually up there. He came with extra arms, a different head before the accident happened. So we'll put him away right away. It's always a good feeling. Then we'll move on to the box. Hello, Gene. So we do have a lot of these. Now, some of the, I think that it's tough because the Batman figures is Batman. And I said I would keep Batman stuff, but I'd have to see how many of these I have. And I'll probably get rid of some of them. Probably the Hulk for sure. Um, you, you, you get to a point where you have to start picking and choosing what you're going to keep and what you're going to get rid of. But these carded figures are great because they're a little extra oomph when you're trading stuff in with different toy stores. So, got a... Oh, well, that's creepy. Ah, there it is. So here we go. Got this, bo this box from August, 5th, uh, August of 2015. Check this out. Now, I have not opened this up since I packed it up. And I had moved from uh, a house uh, that I was staying uh, in to a apartment. So, actually, it was an apartment to a, a little house to a smaller apartment. So, but none of the stuff at that, at that house location actually came out. It all stayed in storage. So, here we go. Ooh, okay, we got some interesting items in here. Um, this is the Star Wars Advent Calendar from, I'm guessing, 2015. Sorry, as I look. 2014. So this is from 2014. And I don't know if they're in here. They probably they feel like they are. Yeah, they're in there. Um, the neat thing about this, now they, uh, Lego does this every year. You open it up and you get a little Lego character and then you have to build them. So the neat thing about this set is, uh, well, the collectability and the value of these sets changes each year. Um, they're always worth something to Lego collectors because they only make one uh, for that year. But this year, this one was driven up in market value insanely because it came with a Santa Vader. So you actually got Santa Vader with this set. Now there is a, a Christmas tree droid. It looks like a Christmas tree. And then you got like a stormtrooper with a Santa hat. Uh, you got a lot of cool pieces. So it's neat to get these extra little characters that maybe you're not going to get like General Reacon from uh, The Empire Strikes Back. Um, but this Vader drove everybody. It just drove the price of it way, way, way up. You couldn't get them at the Lego store. You couldn't get them at Walmart. Couldn't get them at Target. I found them at a uh, one of those calendar shops that sell Lego pieces. This was, um, hey, Maddie, what's up? Uh, this is uh, one of those. This was one of those sets where it was like they had like fifty of them stacked. And I was like, guys, they're gonna go in a day. The second anybody, I spread the word that these are here, they're just gonna disappear. So awesome set. 
I'd like to say hi to my buddy Matt again, who's watching. Um, paper bag. Now, I use a lot of this paper stuff here to kind of pack these. This is, this is kind of neat. So this is the, fun bag. This is the Death Star, it was for like a science kit um, that my wife and I used. We actually used, uh, we had our uh, wedding rings in this. So my nephew, when he came down as the ring bearer down the aisle, was actually holding the Death Star like this. And then we had the rings on a pillow right here. So I guess you can call that a family heirloom now. I wonder if it'll even, it'll probably just roll right off the desk. But that's awesome that that was in there. So that was very cool. I'm glad, I, glad we found that. We were looking for that earlier for some reason. I can't remember what it was. So these are, and I have this upstairs, which is awesome. So I can take these upstairs. These are uh, gun turrets that go on the Star Wars uh, Vintage Collection. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Republic gunship. So these actually go on the wings to the gunship. And I actually have a pilot in there. Um, it's a neat little extension. And they actually made like a little cheap version of it that you could get with one of the figures. But I have these. They go on the ship, and it's upstairs. It's in great shape. So they attach to the side. You can put them in. You can not put them in. They actually don't fold into the ship. They're that big. So they're, it's kind of weird, but they, they are really neat, though. Um, so that's got to go upstairs. Hopefully, they don't fall out. So here we go. Again, it's just randomness of things that Star Wars fans have. This is a coin bank, a tin bank. It's this, this is the crazy stuff that we have in our in our collections so doesn't smell so it probably came from a dollar store it was a buck but see i'll put weapons in that or i'll put some figures in there or something it doesn't get lost so this is this is from star wars rebels this i think this was the cloth that was in the uh in the thing this is from star wars rebels and what this is is i got the box right here so i have the box and this but not in the same box uh, but in a giant box. So this is the ATDP. It's an all-terrain defense pod. So this is the mini version of a walker um, from The Empire Strikes Back. You know, you have the, the big four-legged one, and then you have the two-legged one. Well, the two-legged one, which we had out just the other day, and I moved it somewhere. It's over there. Actually, it's right here. This is great when I can actually show examples of what I'm talking about. So... This is this is the ATST. Now you saw these in Return of the Jedi, and you also saw them briefly in Empire Strikes Back. So this is this version is I believe sits two or three guys. It's pretty big. Um, so th this is this is the regular version. This one is for one pilot. So this is a in the movie this seats uh, three to four people, and this one only seats one. Now the neat thing about this is when they're doing concept art and drawings and all these other things, um, Ralph McQuarrie, uh, I don't think he designed this one, but Joe Johnston, or it might have been um, Dykstra, he might have actually designed this, because I have it in an art book from 1980, and then to see it in Star Wars Rebels really highlighted the fact that uh, Dave Filoni, who was the series, uh, series show, showrunner, went back and used all that original artwork. He didn't want to leave anything untouched. All of it to him was Star Wars. It just wasn't seen on screen. So here we have this really cool little mini vehicle. He put it into Star Wars Rebels, and it became canon. So the legs sort of move, but they're not as articulated as some of the other versions. It's, it's pretty much a toy you're just going to stand and put it on patrol. And this rocket, of course, does fire. But this is one of many uh, vehicles that they released for Star Wars Rebels, but didn't get... Um, they weren't in stores long. It didn't, and the show ran for four years. But it was one of those things where it did not play. It just did not play well in retail. So there wasn't a lot of figures. So this, in turn, makes uh, uh, collectors go crazy to try to find these things post haste after it's all over. So I'm glad I do have this little piece. But I was given this by um, uh, Hasbro. They sent me a box of Star Wars Rebels toys, and that was in it. Unfortunately, they didn't send me a really cool box that it was in. So it would it would have been uh, nice to actually have the box because I would have kept it. It just had a Star Wars Rebel sticker on it. Uh, paper. It's probably the bag the wings were in. I have. Oh, here is my. Um, now this is a. I believe it's a Rubies. 
This is a Star Wars. This is a Star Wars lightsaber. Wait a minute. So this is a little uh, Halloween prop toy. Um, these are like they have these every year at Halloween for kids, and I think I must buy two or three of them every year because they don't last. They do break. And I've had a I had a Darth Vader one um, actually on my belt when I got married. Um, I put it there because I figured the wife would make me take it off or give me this dirty look. And instead, she just thought that was perfect and she thought it was really funny. So um, I'm actually wearing a lightsaber the day I got married. And it's Vader's lightsaber. But I do have Obi-Wan's. Got to have stuff like this, especially when you have a little guy. And you can actually put uh, batteries in this and it'll light up. So basically, it's a very expensive flashlight. Um, but I wish it actually had just like a hook that I could put it on my belt. So that's cool. Definitely have that. And no clue what this is um it's another one of those little plastic square tubs that i have that usually hide figures or keep figures supported so this episode just got a lot longer okay so as i've been saying i've been i've been putting all my figures in bags and i've been keeping their file cards their names all their little tchotchkes that they came with so everything stays together this isn't for resale um I mean, maybe one day when I'm in like my 90s or whatever, or my kids want to get rid of this stuff. Um, this is so I can keep track of all their weapons, what they came with, and get a better sense of the character. And then that bag is their bag. So here's the Flamethrower Trooper from Clone Wars. Here's a, a re-release of Greedo. That's a cool, that's cool. It came with a microchip. Chip. Now, microchip, so we can talk. Here's Nine Nub. Now, some of these I noticed don't have guns. But as you saw in a couple episodes ago, I had that big cache of plastic guns, so I could probably suit these guys back up with their weapons. Um, a clone trooper. So I'm guessing might be this guy. He's just out of the pack, but a lot of these guys, their weapons and everything are in there. But see, the other thing is I've tried to keep all these little cards have a number. This is CW04, so Clone Wars 04, so i got to match those up. Um, this is Goji, which is short, uh, which is a uh, homage to Kaiju. Um, it's a it's a clone trooper pilot. So the little ball thing, the ship, I can actually put him in that ship, and it actually has its own pilot. Did not come with a pilot. Um, got rifles in here too. So here's a uh, Chancellor Valorum. We got a Vader. Some interesting ones in here. So here's Han Solo from Endor. But again, no guns. Oh, he's got a gun in a holster. There he is. Boss Nass. A re-release of IG-88. The neat thing about the IG-88 figure is it's actually just, they just reprinted the old uh, Kenner figure. It made the exact same figure. Um, is this Fives? This looks like Fives from that Clone Wars episode about the trainees. Okay, keep that one out. That's a good story. Um, here's a random, like, uh, it's a neat toe, but it's a random uh, bounty hunter uh, guy from the Clone Wars. So, uh, this is Grand Moff Tarkin. I have him right here. Here's uh, Zam Wessel. She's the first assassin that tries to kill uh, Padme in Attack of the Clones. So here's C-3PO and all those little different parts from Attack of the Clones. A lot of Attack of the Clones stuff in here. Captain Rex in his winter gear. Luke Skywalker as a Stormtrooper from Power of the Force. Now I found some of these cards upstairs, which is ew. Ew. All right, got to get to that. Oh, there's a Power of the Force Bosk. That's an awesome find. Uh, two pack of bug nuts. I guess those are tissues. Probably use this padding. Pack of bug knots. I do have their cards upstairs. Here's a PVC Princess Leia. Interesting. Bounty Hunter from Episode 1. Newt Gunray from Episode 1. And one of the original Boba Fett's from Power of the Force. So when they re-released the figures back in 95, it was one of the original Boba Fett's. Now, um, a random can with nothing in it. Get rid of that. Not even Star Wars. Um, I pulled one out here, and I thought this would be an interesting story. So 
uh, back in uh, 99, summer 2000, um, actually kind of like a, like maybe even leading up to that, um, when Star Wars was on its way, um, Dark Horse Comics was doing Star Wars comics at the time, and they were making uh, Star Wars uh, characters. They took um, Kai Ali Mundi, uh, as who was a Jedi, he's the Conehead Jedi that you see, in the in episode one, and they were they made a whole storyline with him, and he actually goes to Tatooine at one point, and ends up uh, there's apparently there was a Jedi, a fallen Jedi, who ended up living with the Tusken Raiders, and then he had a son who was his Padawan. So it's this really cool cover of a Star Wars comic with a, a Tusken Raider holding a lightsaber, and then um, as the story would go on, the Tusken Raider, uh, the Jedi, he would die, and then his son would be the Padawan of the Jedi Master, Kylo Mundi. So actually, this was one of my first Star Wars customs. So I actually got some blue cloth from an old t-shirt, and then he wore like a blue tunic. And then I made like a little bandolier for him, and then that was the one of my first customs. So at one point I did have lightsabers with him, but, you know, here's extra Jedi robes that came in some sets. And then I just, what I did was I just got, I found an extra Tusken Raider. Here's his weapon, his staff, and all this in all of his gear and then made this figure so one of my first customs and there he is he's a little worse for wear i could probably do a little bit better now and then eventually he loses the mask he doesn't have it anymore it was an interesting storyline so um you know i recommend it i think marvel has put them all up on their apps you can get them all now so this was great finding this again having that little um that custom i did all of these clone troopers and this interesting mix of episode one and uh, Empire Strikes Back. I mean, there's we, we touched just about every movie here. Uh, Finding Boss, though, that's a great figure. Um, that's a figure that you want to look. He's so much better, like more articulated and and bulkier than his original um, Kenner figure, which is a fun figure, um, but it's not as cool as looking as that one. So usually these upgrades of figures, they, everything was a little bit better. And if you are following me and doing this, again, another Star Wars sticker has ended up on the package and labeling it. And I don't know how I got all those figures in there because I still got four more figures here on the side. So, um, finding the Jedi Padawan, whose name I cannot remember, the Tusken Raider was cool. Sounds like these guys are all still in here. Um, I'll probably pull out the Christmas-centric ones and then have these set aside for my son um, I, I'm noticing that I do have a lot more little Lego sets than I remember having. So getting those together is great. And then, of course, anytime I find a vehicle and it's still in great shape, this thing is just awesome. So um, a bit smaller uh, of a review today, uh, but things are really starting to like lean this way. Uh, and I've really got to attack. When we return at noon, of course, um, I'm hoping to have a better set and things laid out. Um, but until then, I, I thank you for joining me. I hope that you're staying safe. Um, if you do have to go out, please wear a mask. And, you know, please uh, check us out. We've got um, a toy commercial spot coming up on Saturday, which is a whole bunch of retro toy commercials from YouTube. We have our top 10 toy chariots of the gods, which is up on our um, website. And it's been shared on social media, of course, as well, which is our opinion on what were the top 10 vehicles from different toy lines as in like what was the best star wars one uh what was the best uh batman one what was the best uh mask you know thundercats that kind of thing um gobots even gobots even gets on there which is really cool that gobots made it made that cut so you want to check those out and again my name is bob i thank you for tuning in and you have the most excellent day